Okay, good evening. Thank you again for joining your Bible study tonight. As we continue on the topic, is Roman Catholicism a false religion? Let's pray. Gracious Father, as we open your word, open our hearts and minds and teach us the truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Um, we are looking at this outline. We looked at uh, uh, the authority of the church, and uh, we also looked at uh, Pope and the priest's authority. I think last week we looked at the Mary, what kind of authority she holds, and today we will look at what does the Catholicism say about scriptures and the authority they have over that. And we have two more next week and the following week. We will look at Sunday and Catholicism and what the Catholicism say about other religions. So the authority of Catholicism over the scriptures, we will look at that today. As I told you last week, remember, we are not talking about Catholic people in general. We are talking about the system, the institution. That is what we are actually talking. So we are not targeting individual Catholics. We are trying to understand the system, how it is formed, what it says, how it governs, how it exercises its power. Those are the things that we are trying to look at, not on in any individual Catholics. God has his people in every church, and when the time comes, God will bring all of them into one fold. As Jesus said when he was alive, you know, I have my other sheep in the other fold. I have to go get them. So... There will be one church and one people, and God is going to accomplish that. And hence the reason why we want to say that we are people of the book, not of anything else, and trying to understand how other believers like us are being misled into things that are not biblical. Now, so today we will look at the authority of Catholicism over the scriptures. What do they say? At least I'll try to put five points. The Bible is divine, but it is a dead letter. Look at this quote. The scriptures indeed is a divine book. They believe it is divine, but it is a dead letter which has to be explained and cannot exercise the action which the preacher can obtain. That means until a bishop or a priest explains it, it remains like a dead letter. So it has no value or importance unless it is explained. And the person that needs to be explained is only by the, the priest that is appointed by the Catholic Church, nobody else. So that's what they say. The Bible is a dead and speechless book. According to them, the scriptures is of dual source, not just one single source. As Protestants, we believe sola scriptura, which means scriptures and scriptures alone. But Catholics believe, they believe in scriptures. Let, don't get me wrong. They, they believe in scriptures. They preach scriptures. They teach scriptures. But scriptures alone is not enough. There's something called traditions. And by, the, by what they mean by traditions is the teaching of the apostles and the, the priests and the fathers of the church. That is also is what they mean by traditions. Their teaching is also important to them. So for them, it's a dual source. One is the scriptures. The other is this. So deposit of faith, as I said, too. One is scriptures. One is traditions. What is tradition? Unwritten, infallible traditions. The traditions are not written, but they are passed on orally from, from priest to priest or apostle to apostle uh, and give, take, given to the church and then now church have the right to uh, exercise. And when the scriptures. So both of them must be inter interpreted by something called magisterial authority. That means... They are the ones who has the right to interpret it. So, for example, who, what is the magisterium? 
is the name given to the official teaching authority of the church. The magisterium interprets the word of God in scriptures and traditions. The bishop in communion with the Pope form this body. Not everybody have the power or the right to interpret both the tradition and the scriptures, but a body of authority called magisterium are the ones that have the right to interpret. And what they say is what must be understood by us. So the authority of the Catholic Church is magisterium. That means the Pope, the bishops, the ones who have to interpret the scriptures for you. Without them, you cannot understand. Without their interpretation, the Bible is a dead book. So, so they also have scriptures and the sacred traditions. It's like a three-legged stool. Three are very important. When it comes to Protestantism, we believe only scriptures and scriptures alone. You don't need sacred traditions. You don't need anybody to interpret. You don't even need uh, Protestant pastors or bishops to interpret. Bible clearly says the Holy Spirit is the teacher. He is the best teacher to interpret the scriptures. So, the Bible is divine. As we said, it's a dead letter. The simple fact is that the Bible, like all dead letters, calls for a living interpreter. So, that means if it is not being interpreted, it's like a dead letter. You need an interpreter to understand it. On your own, you cannot understand it. No, biblically, this is not right. The Bible clearly tells us the Holy Spirit is the interpreter. Holy Spirit is the one who helps us. He shall bring to your memory. He shall teach you all things. That's what Jesus told his disciples when he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict you of sin. He shall teach you all things. He will bring to your memory what you have learned. He is the one, the best teacher. No, the author of any book is the best interpreter, isn't it? If I've written a book, you may read it, you may try to understand it, but the best interpreter of that book is the author. If I'm the author, I know exactly what I meant by what I wrote. You may take it in different ways by the way you understand from your cultural point of view, from your understanding point of view, from your uh, background or whatever. But the best interpreter of any book is its author. He or she can tell you what they mean by what they wrote. So the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible, author of the word. So he is the best teacher. That's why Jesus said, he shall teach you all things. All of us, we are not converted, convicted just because a pastor spoke to you. We are convicted and converted. We believe because the Holy Spirit spoke to our hearts. He is the one who is convicting us because one of the works of the Holy Spirit is he will convict you. He will convict the world of its sin. The scripture says it's a double-edged sword. It has the power to pierce our hearts. So for us to say it is a dead letter, somebody, a living person must interpret it is not biblical and it is not necessary. But the Catholicism believe that uh, it's a dead letter. It only can make sense only when a living person interpret it. And that also not anybody and everybody. Only the magisterium that is appointed by the church. Do you know in the dark ages, when people didn't have access to Bible, it was chained to the pulpit. Nobody even have a career. Nobody even allowed to see what is on it. Whatever the bishop interpreted, you believed it for a long, long time. Only when people, when the printing press started, when Bibles were printed or handwritten and shared, people did realize what the importance of the Bible is. And that's when people's eyes were opened and then realized, you know what, the just shall live by faith, not by traditions or by good deeds. And that's how we, Martin Luther and many others when they read the Bible for themselves and understood it as the Holy Spirit interpreted, they stood against Catholicism and said, what you're doing is wrong. As a result, they were burnt alive, they were beat, they were called as heresies, heretics, and all kinds of persecution. Some of the massacres, the world's most horrible massacres took 
under Catholicism. They killed more people than even the terrorists killed. That horrible it was in the dark ages. Okay, we confess that the Holy Spirit is imperfect and is a dead letter until it is explained by the Supreme Pontiff and allowed by him to be read by the laity. So if laity have to read it, you have to get a permission from them. I think this is the confession of the Protestants' oath. The second point is the Catholic Church is above the Bible. She, that is the Catholic Church, is not the child of the Bible, as many non-Catholics imagine, but its mother. She derives neither her existence nor her teaching authority from the New Testament. From the book, The Faith of Millions by Reverend John A. O'Brien, I believe. So what does it say? The church is not the child of the Bible. In fact, the child is the, the, the church is the mother of the Bible. She derives neither her existence nor her teaching authority from the New Testament. But then where does she derive her authority from? From the apostles and their teaching, not from the Bible. The third point, the Catholic Church is the only lawful administrator, authenticator, interpreter, custodian, possessor, and the protector of the scriptures. The task of interpreting the word of God authentically has been entrusted solely to the magisterium of the church, that is, to the Pope and to the bishops in communion with him. This is taken from Universal Catholic Catechism 100. So the, interpreted, the task of interpreting the word of God is purely for the Pope and the bishops, not for any common man. The belief in the Bible as the sole source of faith is unhistorical, illogical, fatal to the virtue of faith, and destructive of unity. This is from the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 8, under Protestantism. They're trying to uh, defy the sola scriptura. So what does it say? The belief in the Bible as a sole source of faith is what? It is not historically right, it is not logical, it is dangerous, and it is not good for the faith. And it destroys the unity, I believe, completely opposite to what the scripture teaches. The first objective or principle of um, proclaims the canonical scripture, especially the New Testament, to be the only infallible source and rule of faith and practice. That's what the Protestantism came up with that scripture says infallible, it is the only rule of faith and practice and asserts the right of private interpretation of the same. That's what we say, through the Holy Spirit, anybody can interpret it. Is distinction from the Roman Catholic view. What is the, What does the Roman Catholic view say? Which declares the Bible and tradition to be coordinate sources and rule of faith and makes tradition, especially the degrees of popes and councils. So what is traditions according to here? Whatever the pope teaches, whatever the council come up with, those are all under tradition. They are the only legitimate and infallible interpreter of the Bible. Nobody else. On the same point, the task of interpreting authentically the word of God has been entrusted exclusively to the living teaching office of the church. I don't know who gave that authority, but they believe the only people that can interpret God's word is the church and no one else have the right. Fourth point, all non-Catholic approved Bible translations are forbidden and are condemned and they are called heretical. This is the goal too of two of the crafty Bible societies which renew the old skill of the heretics and ceaselessly force on people of all kinds, even the uneducated gifts of the Bible. Look at how rude and how proud this statement is. They believe that all the Bible societies have a, a heretical nature in making every putting Bible in the hands of every common man even the uneducated. 
what is wrong in an uneducated man holding a Bible in his hand? For a Catholicism, that is not acceptable. The gifts of the Holy Spirit cannot be given to the uneducated according to them. Very sad. They issue these in large numbers and at great cost in vernacular languages of the people, translations which infringe the holy rules of the church. So by doing that, you are infringing on the holy rules of the church, I believe. The commentaries which are included often contain perverse explanations. So having rejected divine tradition, the doctrine of the fathers and the authority of the church, Catholic church, they all interpret the words of the Lord by their own private judgment. So if you don't interpret it based on Catholic fathers and the authority of the church, that is called you are interpreting on your own words and your own judgment, thereby perverting their meaning. So if you try to interpret it on your own without the help of the Catholic Church or the Fathers, then you are perverting the meaning of the Word of God, I believe. As a result, what happens? They fall into the greatest errors. Anybody who does it, they are falling into great errors. Thus, we emphatically exhort you to announce these, our commands to the people accredited to your pastoral care. Explain them in the proper place and time and strive mightily to keep the faithful sheep away from the Christian League and other biblical societies, as well as away from their followers. Also take from the faithful both the vernacular Bibles, which have been published contrary to the sanctions of the Roman pontiffs and all other books which are proscribed and condemned. So there was time when they were saying that no, no Catholic should hold a Bible that is printed by the Protestants, neither should they read it or interpret it. If they are in possession of it, you take them away from them because they are not approved by the Pope or the Church, then henceforth they are condemned. And it is so strange, even the Catholic Bible is available in so many different languages today. It's some surprising how they have, how far they have come to translate their own Bible into different languages now. Okay, the another five point, the Holy Scripture should be rejected in order to follow church traditions, even if the tradition is erroneous. This is going beyond the imagination, isn't it? Even if the tradition is wrong, you still have to believe it more than the Bible. If we must choose between the Holy Scriptures of God and the old errors of the church, we should reject the former. Written by John N. Faber, a defender of the papacy, cited in the history of the Reformation. So if you have to choose between the Bible and the traditions of the church, even if the traditions are wrong, you better choose traditions and not the Bible. Catholic tradition is safer to follow than the Bible. Like two sacred rivers flowing from paradise, the Bible and divine tradition contains the words of God. The precious gems of revealed truths. Though these two divine streams are in themselves on account of their divine origin, that means they believe the Bible is of divine origin, the Catholic traditions are also of divine origin, and uh, they have equal sacredness. They both are, have equal stake. But look at this. And are both full of revealed truths. Both are truthful. Still, of the two, tradition is to us clearer and safer so which is safer between though they believe both are divine both come from divine revelation both are full of truths but for a catholic the tradition is much safer and clearer than the bible itself or the scriptures written by catholic uh, by joseph fay and uh, when he's commenting on catholic beliefs Okay, those are a few points on how the Catholics give more importance to traditions than the Bible. Let's see what Jesus actually taught when it comes to traditions. You remember the Pharisees and the teachers? Look at what he says about them in Matthew 15. 
We'll read from verse 1 to 9. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? So these traditional teachings existed from there. In fact, Catholics say the traditional teachings, they existed even during Jesus' time. They're not new. That's not something we invented. But look at what Jesus himself said. What did he say when they asked him about certain things? Why do your disciples, what was the question they asked? Why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? They're not saying that they broke the commandments. Their problem is not the commandments. Their issue is breaking the traditions of the elders. So what is one of the traditions? You should not, you should wash your hands before you eat. If you're not washing your hands, then it is sin or something like that. They don't wash their hands before they eat. Then Jesus replied, and why do you break the commandments of God for the sake of your traditions? Look at how Jesus is teaching. For you, tradition is so important, whether washing hand or not washing is more important to you than keeping the commandments of God. So if you think that my disciples are breaking the traditions, let me ask you, why are you breaking the commandments of God? Then he qualifies, what do you mean by when he said, you're breaking the commandments of God. And he says, why do you break the commandments of God for the sake of traditions? For God said, honor your father and mother. And anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. That means these people have no regard for their parents. They're not honoring. They're not keeping the commandments of God. For them, commandments of God have no value. Their traditions, the way you dress, the way you speak, the way you wash your hands, the way you sit, the way you pay your tithe, those gave more importance to them than the law of God. So God, Jesus was attacking them on their own point. You give importance to traditions, but you break the commandments of God. You break the fifth commandment. But you say that if anyone declares that we might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God. In fact, you know what was one of the law? If you have, if you, why Jesus said this, if you have parents that you are taking care of, and you have no, you have only some money, and you have to decide between giving to them or to the church or to the priests. You have to give it to the church because the church is more important than your own parents. You can neglect them, but you cannot neglect the church. You can neglect, you cannot neglect giving to God. That's why Jesus said, "You break God's commandment." Bible says, oh, "How do you honor your father?" Honoring father doesn't mean you say, good morning, dad, good morning, mom, I love you, you are so good to me. That's not what is honoring. Caring for them, being there for them, taking care of them. But the tradition is teaching what? If you have to choose between giving to your parents or giving to the church, choose church, not your parents. That's what Jesus said. They are not to honor their father or mother with it. That's what they, they were teaching. By teaching that, what they're saying, that's you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. Then he says, you're hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus strongly condemned these Pharisees and teachers of the law who gave more importance to the traditions than the word of God, just like the Catholicism. We have just discovered how Catholicism gives more importance to traditional teachings than the word of God. In fact, they say if you have to choose between the both, traditions are more clearer and better than the word of God, they say. Exactly like the Pharisees and the teachers. The scripture says that the just shall live by faith. The Catholics teach that you have to pay penance for your sins. The church have the right to send you to heaven or hell. The church says there is no mediator between us and God, Jesus himself. But the church have mediators. You can't go to Jesus without Mary. And even Mary, I'm sorry, even Jesus is subject to the commands of the Pope and the bishops. You see, all these tradition things are more important to them than the word of God, which was not new to us today. 
it existed during Jesus' time and Jesus strongly condemned it. Some other importance about what the uh, what the scriptures importance of scriptures in believers' life. Look at Second Peter one nineteen to twenty one. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it. What does Peter say? What the Holy Spirit revealed to us, the message of the prophets is completely reliable, and when you obey it or when you when you pay attention to it, you do very well as to a light shining in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. If only you give importance to God's word in your life, that is good enough, he says. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scriptures came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. Whatever the prophets taught, it was not their words. It was not their message. It was God speaking to them. That's why he says, it, no prophecy came by any man's private interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will. But prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that used human agency to speak his word. It's not the human word. They might have written in their own language the way they understood, but the message came from God. God used humans as an agency to write his word. 2 Timothy 3.15 and 16 and 17 is very clear. Paul talking to Timothy, he says, How from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. He said, if you have the holy, if you have the holy scriptures, when you learn them, they are good enough to make you wise unto salvation. You don't need anything. And he commanded Timothy because Timothy knew his scriptures from his childhood, which made him wise unto salvation. And then he tells Timothy what the scriptures is all about. He says, all scriptures is God-breathed. Not 90%, not 99%. Every scripture is from God. And it is useful for what? Teaching rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So he was telling Timothy, Timothy, from childhood you have learned scriptures which made you wise unto salvation. You are a pastor today. You stood on the truth today because from childhood you have known unto scriptures. And he's admonishing him. I want you to know, Timothy, that every scripture is from God and it is good for what? Teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. If you want to be thoroughly equipped for every good work, all that you need is scriptures. Because in scriptures, everything you need as a pastor is there. You can teach, you can rebuke, you can correct, you can train. Everything that is necessary for a growth of a Christian unto salvation is, a, is in the scriptures. So Timothy, stay faithful to scriptures. You have known it from this childhood, stay faithful. That is good enough for you and nothing else. It says when you do it, it will equip you for how, what? Every good work. He didn't say you two should have another resources. Just stay faithful to the scriptures. Look at Psalms 19, 7 says, the law of the Lord is what? Perfect. Refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The law of God is perfect. And what do we mean by the word? Paul says, John says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. God himself is his word, is the word. Psalms 12, 6 says, And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. That means pure. The word of the Lord is pure. And the author of the Hebrew says, For the word of God is what? Alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The author of the Hebrews is saying what the word of God is a double-edged sword. 
there is nothing that it cannot cut or pierce or convict or convert. That powerful it is. You don't need any other things. And finally, in the last book, God revealed through Revelator John. He says, I want everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add, God will add to that person the place, plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this scroll. So contextually, when Paul was, or when John the Beloved was concluding the book of Revelation, the Holy Spirit revealed him to write this. This is God's word. Nobody should add anything to it. If they add anything, God will add plagues to them. Or if they take away anything from it, God will remove their names from the book of life. Which strongly tells us what God has revealed in his word is good enough for us to have salvation and understanding of God and his love and his sacrifice for us. Any teachings outside of this is adding or describing. Now you may say, well, Pastor, what about all these Christian authors? Such amazing books they write. Amazing things they do. What about Ellen White's writings? We believe in her writings are inspired too. So many great authors have written great books that are so helpful. My answer to that is, I, I believe all the Christian books, majority of them are written by God's people with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. May not be as in the line of the inspiration of what the Bible is about, but definitely inspired by God. But you know what's the difference? Everybody that wrote anything outside the Bible must complement God's word. You don't interpret God's word based on human resources. Everything that's written about God, about God and his word must complement and support what the Bible says. That's why Paul said, even if an angel from heaven will come and teach you anything other than what you have been taught. Don't believe, he says. Jesus also said in the last days, in the 20, Matthew 24, about the second coming, many prophets will come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, teaching you all traditions. Don't believe. So all the Christian authors, great, amazing authors that have inspired millions of people, they all, if they are inspired by God, they support what the scripture says. That means God inspires me to write and explain more on the scriptures, not come up with my own traditions and deny the scriptures. If anybody denies scriptures, if anybody says that traditions, man's teachings, bishop's teachings, apostolic teachings, or teachings of the church is above the Bible, you can close your eyes and say that is hypocrisy. To, dad, to John, God has revealed nobody should add, nobody should remove. So whatever has been written by humans must explain scriptures clearer. Like for example, Ellen White. She said, you don't need my writings if you understood the Bible clearly as it is written. Mine is only a lesser light leading to a greater light. She tried to just expand and explain the scriptures, not contradict the scriptures and deny the authority of the scriptures. Any writers, we all read so, we buy so many Christian authors' books. They must all complement, support what the scripture says. If they don't, it is not inspired. No matter how much of information you may have. There are so many gospels, almost close to 100 gospels available in the first century. Only four of them went into canonization. Why? As much as the other Gospels have so much of good information, there is so much truth in it, they did not support the true Gospel message. And hence, they did not make it into it. Because the theme is different from what the theme of Gospel and Salvation is. So this is what the Catholicism says about Scriptures. I think we should pray that God will open the eyes of the faithful believers in Catholicism to search the scriptures and understand it for themselves, then depending on traditions and somebody to interpret for you. 
God has given scriptures to each one of us. And the only best teacher is the Holy Spirit. Not even me, not even any human beings. If you can kneel down on your knees, open the Bible and say, Lord, help me. He is the best teacher. As I said in my opening remarks, the best interpreter of any book is its author. Not anybody else. They may give you the best of explanation, but they can't get into the mind of an author and give exactly what the author might have thought, a to, a word to word. But the author can because the author is the one who wrote it. So the Holy Spirit is the author of the scriptures. That's why the scripture says, he shall teach you all things. We as pastors are here. We as uh, Bible teachers are here just to give an explanation of what the scripture says from different angles. But the best teacher is God. If anything that we say that is not in accordance to God's word, you should deny our teaching, but trust God's word. That's what it's all about. Otherwise, you know, our faith will be. Instead, we can't say on the day of judgment, well, Pastor Mohan said it. I like him, so I believed him. I didn't realize it was wrong. No. You have brains. God has given you wisdom. How much of the Holy Spirit is available to me? He's available to you. Pray about it. This is what I heard. Is it true? If it is true, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal you in a greater measure. If it is wrong, help ask the Holy Spirit to tell you, Lord, help me. And the Spirit will tell you. If you are really genuinely faithful, He will show you what is right and wrong. Ellen White says, in the last days, there are two great deceptions that will deceive even the very elect. One is Sunday sacredness and the immortality of the soul. And she also says, only the diligent students of God's word will be delivered from the powerful delusions of the devil. We should not depend on somebody interpreting the scriptures to us. We should search for ourselves. Jesus himself said, search the scriptures. Compare verse by verse. When you genuinely do it, your mind will be open. God will speak to you and reveal to you what the truth is. Okay, next week we will look at uh, what the Catholic Church says about Sunday worship. God bless you all. Let me close and stop.